Today we're going to be learning how to use Clang with Unreal to power the Clang D extension in VS Code to get much better autocomplete. This is going to be a slightly longer video than my last one, but unfortunately that's required because it's a little bit more complicated. I am going to be making a slight assumption that you've seen the last video. It's very quick and it just goes over the bare minimum of setting up VS Code, so probably you don't even need to see it, but um, I do make some assumption that you've seen it. All right, now enough preamble, let's get going. The first step's gonna to be to install the Clang compiler. Now one way to do that is to open the Visual Studio installer, or like the Visual Studio build tool installer, and go to individual components and search for Clang. Now hopefully you have the right version of the Visual Studio installer, and you can just install Clang 16.0.4. Now it's pretty important that you get this particular version if you're using Unreal Engine 5.4.4. .4. I would not recommend trying to do this with Unreal Engine 5.5. It was uh, kind of a pain when I was testing it and I think there's a few kinks to work out. Now, if you don't see the right version of Clang here, I'll have a link in the description for which version of the Visual Studio Build Tools installer that you need. Now, an alternative to using the Visual Studio installer is just to install LLVM. And so you can go to the LLVM website, click download on 16.0.4. Again, the version's pretty important. That will bring you to their GitHub releases. And then you can just search for your platform, which is probably going to be Win64. You can just download that. Next, we need to get the Unreal Engine source code. Now, I'm not going to walk you through every single step. There are pretty good docs from um, Epic about how to do this. I will give you one handy git command that I recommend using when you're cloning so that you don't get all of the massive amounts of history in their git repo. But the reason we have to do this is that the rocket build that comes from Epic Game Store is built with MSVC and I couldn't really get it to work. I, maybe it's possible to get it to work with that build. Um, but yeah, I could not. And honestly, I prefer having source build anyways versus using Epic Game Store. I'll have a link in the description for the documentation on how to get the source. I mean, the longest part's going to be building it. If you have a bad computer, then honestly, this probably just isn't the tutorial for you. I probably should put that in the beginning. <laughs> but uh, yeah, if, if you have a potato computer, just give up now. All right, once you're done syncing, before you start building the source, make sure you go to your build configuration.xml. The only one that ever works for me is the one in app data. But make sure you add under Windows Platform compiler, Clang, and you can specify the version if you have multiple versions of Clang installed. The last thing I'll mention about this is I do not recommend using the Clang linker. If you leave this option out, I believe the default is false, but uh, yeah, that's totally untested by me and by Epic. Leaving a small plug in here for the two videos I'm working on next, which is using Unreal Build Accelerator with Horde to distribute builds across computers. And then the other one, which is probably more applicable to most people and also more hidden, is using a fast build cache locally to basically cache build. So in case you ever have to accidentally, you know, rebuild the same thing twice, um, this will prevent you from having to do that. It, it'll cache it locally and it'll save you a ton of time. You'll be able to do a full source build, you know, quote unquote, in uh, like 20 minutes, which would have taken you three hours or something. One thing to note is that Clang is a lot pickier than MSVC, and so when you build the engine with Clang, there's going to be warnings that come up as errors that Epic developers, I guess, never ran into or had the warnings disabled. I personally like to leave the warnings as errors on. I've submitted many of them to be fixed, like this one in particular will come up if you're using 544, but I've already submitted a fix, and uh, I believe it's fixed in 55. I mean, fixed. It's not really broken, but... It will fail your build if you don't fix it. Once your engine source build is done, you can go ahead and build your, you know, main project or whatever project you're using to test this with. While that build's going, you can go ahead and open the extensions tab, and then from there, search for Clang D, and then install the extension. Next, we need to configure the extension. Go to the gear and then settings, add some of these Clang D arguments, which I'll have in the description. And then we want to make sure that our path is correct. So you can see Clang D path. I'm using the Visual Studio install, but if you're using the LLVM install, it'd be a different location. And if you happen to have that folder on your path, then you could just put Clang D.exe and it should figure it out. 
Now we need to generate a compile commands DB for both your project and for Unreal Engine. It doesn't take very long, but you need to do it. You can either use Unreal Build Tool. It has a dash mode generate clang database argument. Or honestly, I don't use this. I have a build script that I wrote um, that's actually on my GitHub, and I have a video about it. So yeah, if you want an easier time building, I recommend it. The most important part is that each project, so Unreal Engine 5 is a project, your test project is a project, they should each have a compile commands file in the root of their project. All right, we are in the home stretch. There is only basically one more thing that we have to do, which is add these .clangd files to the root of each project. So in your test project and in UE5, add a .clangd. I will have this in the description. Edit the compiler path to point to the, you know, your location, depending on uh, which Visual Studio version and whether you went with the LLVM direct download instead. And this just tells ClangD uh, some information about how to handle your, your project. And I think we're done. I would restart Visual Studio Code and then uh, let's do a little demo. So I'm going to add a Unagra system, which uh, here's one problem that uh, I don't have a fix for, which is that a lot of the time it will auto include things below the dot generated header file. And so you need to just manually move it up. But uh, I think that's better than turning off auto includes. And so you'll see here, you'll still get some red squiggles, um, especially when you add a header files, you're going to get red squiggles. It's just, uh, yeah, it'll go away once you build, but you still get the autocomplete. So if we go to the CPP file and we try to interact with, you know, this Niagara system, you can see the autocomplete's still pretty coherent, even though you, yeah, there's some red squiggles and sometimes you can get those squiggles to go away. I mean, my, uh, index is rebuilding. So you can see at the bottom, it's indexing you know tens of thousands of files and uh, here's an example where i'm trying to access unagra function library and the autocomplete is still working on it but uh yeah finally got there still probably faster than the visual studio intellisense and yeah otherwise uh things are working it's uh picking up the uh, metadata for functions relatively quickly even though my index isn't finished building so if we go ahead and build the project then we can get rid of some of these red squiggles so the project's built, and so now if you go to a file and just hit, you know, control S, then that will trigger Clang D to reparse the file. And it, it's gonna take a little bit because again, it's rebuilding my index, so we're we're kind of in a queue here. But uh it, it's a lot snappier once the index is actually finished building. But you can see here it it reparsed my header file and my CPP file, and now I don't have any red squiggles. And we can go ahead and test that uh the other functionality that you'd expect works. So like go to and uh, finding references and things like that. And like here, here's an example where the index was building. Once I hit this file, it sort of like bumped that up to the top of the queue. And so it took a little bit to uh, get some of the, you know, get some of the results, but otherwise things are pretty snappy. I honestly love it. <laughs> I still keep visual studio around. Like I said, it is still useful. But in my opinion, the day-to-day -day experience with VS Code with Clang D is pretty awesome. And that's it. Uh, I'm sure there's going to be questions, so leave them in the comments. I'll do my best to, uh, to research and get back to you. There's going to be a lot of stuff in the description. I'll probably forget some stuff, and uh, I'll keep updating it and make sure that everyone gets what they need. Subscribe and like if you like the video.